So, now I'm going to install the pulley for the AT damper, which is going to attach the serpent belt to the pulley itself. So it's go like that. Okay, so now I'm going to continue with the pulley of the water pump. I have got a, let's call it a performance pulley, which is bigger diameter. This is the original one, which I have removed from the engine. And as you can see, it can go inside the new one. So it's that much bigger. Let's see, is there a difference in the weight? Because this should be aluminum. So this is 261. And the old one, it's it's wider. Uh, but uh, the biggest advantage here is that this is bigger diameter, which means it's going to make less rotations on one crank revolution. I know some people are going to say that this is going to reduce drastically the cooling efficiency, but we won't see that. Uh, as we know, the thermostat on this engine is much more cooler than the normal engines. Uh, so I'm going to see how it's going to run. Probably there will be no issues. Actually, this should be installed like that. Uh, probably there will be no issues, uh, but yeah, I'm going to check it, of course, before I'm sure that I can push it harder. Uh, but I have seen a lot of people are driving with these pulleys without any issues, so I'm pretty sure that there will be no drama with this. Uh, and yeah, it goes through here, kind of close, but uh, still it has a room. Before installing the pulley for the water pump, you're going to need to install this hose which goes here. For which you're going to need to remove the bolt from the water pump because it's held here with this bolt. Let's install it. I'm going to put a little bit of silicone grease on the o-ring. I have changed this o-ring. Actually, it should go behind the valve pipe. So something like that. Okay. And up here, there is one more bolt which is holding it. And this end of the hose goes to the coolant reservoir, uh, which we're going to figure out how we're going to run it. Because originally on the E36, the reservoir is not there. So, the hydraulic pumps. Because I didn't have any issues with my hydraulic pump, I decided to use mine, which is this. This is from the E46 M3. Uh, and pretty much they look kind of the same. Uh, yeah, this is the same fitting here. This uh, 90 degrees fitting, which we have also here. Uh, and from behind, yeah, there is some difference uh, in design, but the fittings the connections of the hoses look pretty much the same so i think i can use this pump if it needs to uh, because i did not know the condition of this pump that's why i decided to use mine okay so the hydraulic pump pulley yes we're going to go with bigger one here also actually i believe this is mandatory in this engine i know the steering wheel is going to be a little bit stiffer Uh, but because of the higher RPMs, if you want to protect your hydraulic pump, it's a good idea to go with bigger diameter hydraulic pulley because it's going to reduce the RPMs of the hydraulic pump and this is going to protect it and it's not going to overheat so much, uh, which is going to reduce the spillage from the hydraulic reservoir. So let's do our measurements just to show the difference in diameter. It's not so drastic like the water pump actually, but this is the difference. Yeah, the sun is not in our favor, but it's bigger. So let's start with the OEM. Oops, with the OEM pulley. Okay, it's a little bit big to measure it, but 192. Let's do it one more time. Yeah, 192. And uh, this one is for sure is heavier. Yeah, it's going to be kind of hard to measure it. So 298. 
So 100 more I believe, let's see once again, yeah, pretty much 100 more than the OEM one, but we're going to gain some performance from the diameter, and yeah, on place for sure the steering is going to be a little bit stiffer, but I can live with this, uh, so let's install it. Okay. It turns out that I'm not going to be able to use this metal bracket which I removed from my engine because if we look the alignment of the pulley and the crankshaft, as we can see, yeah, we cannot run it because the pulley should be much more further forward than right now as the water pump pulley, as we can see, the misalignment. So I guess I'm going to need to use the bracket from the original hydraulic pump because it's going to push it probably a little bit further, I guess, I'm going to try. But yeah, something interesting that my colleague saw. This is the water, water pump pulley. And as we can see here, it has small amount of damage from somewhere, I guess, but it's a little bit curved. Uh, it's not the end of the world, it's going to do the job. So now I'm going to transfer the aluminum bracket here for the hydraulic pump and hope that we're going to align with the crankshaft pulley. So this is the original bracket from the S54 plus the rear one. I'm going to need to use the both of them from the E46. Once again, I'm going to try to use my original pump from the Inter 6 Hopefully it's going to work out. So now I'm going to try to mount everything and hopefully it's going to align with the serpentine belt channels. Okay, so the idea is that this bracket is much more thicker than the Meta So about the hydraulic pump pulleys, actually it turns out that they are different. So this is from the E36 which I compared with the new one, which is the bigger diameter of all of them. But this is what I have removed from the S54 hydraulic pump and as we can see it is much more smaller than the E36 one. So the E36 one is much more bigger and if we compare it with the biggest one which we are going to install. Uh, the difference is pretty obvious that the S54 one is much more smaller. So let's install this and see how everything aligns. So just to show you, before torquing down the bolts on the front, that the pulley is aligning with the crankshaft one. Nothing like before. So yeah, you're going to need to use the bracket from the S54. Okay, so to be able to reroute the installation for the valve coil, you're going to need to remove this flange for the thermostat because the pocket is way too big to go through here. Uh, so that's why I have removed it. Uh, and yeah, right now we are working on the installation. Because the installation is from E46 and originally the ECU on the E46 on, is on the driver side and in E36 is on the passenger side. That's why we're going to need to make the cables a little bit longer from this part of the engine for all the sensors. The cables need to be longer and because the detonation, the knock sensors and the crankshaft sensor, which is this one, this is box for the crankshaft sensor, has, uh, which, how it was called, I don't remember how it was called in English, but they are different. So how to show you, how to show you, uh, yeah. This kind of cabling. Uh, it, so we took one more installation from E36, 
which is here and we just cut it the wires for the knock and the crankshaft sensors okay so this is one of the cables shielded wires which we took from the other installation yeah this is from 1.6 petrol engine e36 and this is how the shielded wire looks like it goes in here and it gets out here so this is the shielded part which is connected to ground and this is the cables which are connected to the plug and this is not the normal cables i believe these cables are aluminium not copper ones like all the rest so if you just connect the copper wires it's possible to make some issues with the signal and as we know on this siemens systems these issues are really gentle about the signals that's why we soldered a shielded wire so to make it longer because i don't want to risk it and the shielded part we're just going to connect it to a ground this is the shielded part which all the shielded wire are connected and originally one ground wire is connected to the shielded wires which we're going to connect yeah right now it's looking like that but we're going to solder it just put it like that so to remember so this is the only package up that you're going to need the shielded wires for this crankshaft and the knock sensors so in total we need uh, four shielded wires uh, and yeah this really messy right now you probably not going to understand everything but the easiest way is to do it we just cut it here so to take the wiring from this hole here so to make it go through here uh, originally the wire is going past through underneath here that's why we remove it from here and now it's going to go through here so the biggest issue is that the wiring is not long enough to go inside the ECU hole of the E36 which is right there the Z3 wiring I think it fits but it's really hard to find and the new Z3 wiring is around 800 euro so that's why we're going to try to do our best with the one that we have so now I'm going to install the engine in the car and we're going to see is the wires long enough if everything is okay I'm going to pack it up uh, and yeah I need to not forget to install this throttle positioning pedal it has uh, six wires which should be connected to X6004 I believe yeah now I remembered this was connected to the wiring this is x604 the gray plug for the ECU we're going to put the wiring from the throttle body here and this is all the wiring for the SMG which goes back to the uh, back to the to the gearbox this is the main plug and all the small plugs which are going back there yeah there is a lot of wiring we have seen up the, inst <coughs> the installation a lot uh, because we had a lot of wires which we are not going to use I have removed the wiring even for the rear one of the sensors actually now I'm going to install the white bed sensors because after that it's going to be kind of hard so now I'm going to install them uh, and uh, one of the sensors this is what I'm going to use I'm going to use two uh, M white bed sensors for bank one and bank two okay so the both one of the sensors white bed white band sensors are installed school i am is sending the exact plug box for the sensors so yeah with one hand is going to be hard but uh, they are really long so i think it's going to be plenty enough to install it on the dashboard actually they are not going to be on the dashboard but going to be on the central console so just going to leave them like that for now and yeah between i forget to say i'm going to use the e36 alternator so i have put one additional wire for the alternator which is only with one wire i'm going to use additional pressure sensor oil pressure sensor which is going to be connected here plus a temperature sensor oil temperature sensor so i have put several wires inside this loom here so to be able yeah, where, yeah this is the additional wires or here these four of them for the additional sensors which i'm going to use and the ecm don't need because it doesn't have a port for them but i'm going to connect them to x20 which is this plug uh, up here and because i don't want to destroy my plug my original wiring from the m52 i'm going to use this yeah this i'm going to cut it here and going to use it see actually we have removed one relay yeah here it is we have removed this relay for the SMG plus this fuse 
40 amp fuse, so we have removed it because it's for the SMG and we are not going to use it. So pretty much the front axle is ready, is painted and reinforced. As, as I'm, now I'm going to show some pictures before the painting. And now we're going to install these pivots for the SLR control arms, which are going like that from here. So I'm going to install it on the front axle. I'm going to use these bushings, engine bushings. This is the part number. This is from E46 N3. They are using pretty much the same bushings like on the E36, but they're a little bit lower, which is going to compensate for the additional height of the reinforcement plates, which is 3 mm. Actually, I'm selling these plates. I'm going to post it in the description below of the video. You can see them. So this is the main issue with this front axles here. It breaks down. And yeah, underneath here, as you can see, additional reinforce, reinforcement for the front axle. So yeah, pretty much this is the idea. The difference on the E46 is that uh, here where the front axle is cold, on the E46 it has additional length, so it's a little bit further from here. But rather than this, all the reinforcement plates are the same, like on the E36. So now I'm going to install the bushings, both of them and the pivots and yeah, I'm going to be able to install the front axle in place. Okay, so engine is installed. I have worked a little bit on the wiring. This is the original plastic trim for the installation on E36. So it's going to sit like that. Everything is going to be covered inside. I think we're going to have enough length for the wiring. This is the plug for the ECU. So I think it's going to be able to be fitted here. All of this should go in there. I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to try to figure out how I'm going to fit it there. And I have started working on the wiring here, which is going to go inside, which is going to go inside this box, which is the original one from S54. Yeah, this is how we have repaired it. This is from behind and this is how it was. We needed to cut it so to move the wiring through here. So right now it's repaired and it's nothing is going to get inside. And yeah, I'm just going to close it with this and nothing is going to be seen. We're going to do additional holes for the air mass meter plug. This is the all pressure sensor. So originally it has only one wire, but I have put two here. This is the one of it is the original wire, which goes to the ECM. And the other one is going uh, here. And I have made my labeling here, all pressure. So I'm going to install it on the X20 plug. So to have a low pressure light on my instrument poster. The other one is go to the ECM. And see I have two additional wires for the low temperature sensor and for the low pressure sensor which is going to be used with a gauge inside the car. So yeah, the engine is inside. Everything. Yeah, it, it wasn't the easiest job to install the engine in place because the exhaust manifold was hitting the chassis but we managed to install it. Once again with the E46M3 bushings and uh, the mountings from E36. So everything is in place. Actually here is going to be the hydraulic reservoir. This is where the original sits on the E36 and actually on E46 also I believe. So yeah, I just going to need to add a ground wire here to the chassis. But this is how it sits in the car. Let me show you from behind. We don't have a lot of room but this is how much clearance we have. And yeah, this is how the Super Sprint is sitting. Nobody is going to see it because this is going to cover it. So for this empty hole here, which has a <coughs> poke on it, as we can see here, I'm going to use a pressure, let's see, sensor, sender unit. Okay, sender unit. So it's going to be from 0 to 5 bars. So for this, because it's from 0 to 5, you're going to need a sender unit, which is from 0 to 5 once again. Because if you take a sender unit from 0 to 10 bars, this gauge is not going to work properly. Check before buying, because they are 100 
kinds of this center units you're going to need exactly what your gauge is, is in my case 0 to 5 so this is the part number which i'm going to use this is once again video some of them has two terminals behind which one is going to be for the gauge and the other one is going to be warning light uh, but it turns out that this gauge doesn't have this warning light option so that's why i took only with one terminal okay so the shielded wires are pretty much extended this is the three wires which we have extended and the shielding is connected here to this ground wire and after that is going back to the original place where they were connected the shielded part of it so this is the original connection of the shielded wires right now because we have made them longer is connected here so yeah i think we have plenty of wire so i can stretch them out back there so i'm going to have enough wire for sure and as we can see this port has enough length to go inside okay so a little bit of update I decided to put the relays on their original position which is here plus these fuses are going to be here going to be located here I have made some I forget how was this code but you know what, what it is previously it was this puck so one of the wires is going to be connected here and uh, the other one was somewhere here I forget where exactly and here one more okay. one more here once again there were puck like this here which this is going to be connected underneath here in the original power distribution box and the bigger wire the thickest wire, wire which is going to be connected here probably going to take from the e36 this is how the wiring it looks like still a lot of wires which should go inside there yeah this is the ground which i go to connect probably here the original place for the e36 little by little i'm getting somewhere but there is a lot of wires guys and it's really time consuming to try to put everything in its place and try to make it look kind of clean but yeah right now <laughs> it's a mess so when i start the engine and see that everything is okay i'm going to clean up everything i'm going to wrap it up but for now i'm going to keep it like that because i'm not sure is everything going to be okay okay so about the alternators finally i think i found how to install the bigger pulley on the alternator once again i want to use the e36 alternator so this is e36 80 amps e36 140 amps and this is the alternator which i have removed originally from this engine s54 s54 i start rebuilding the e36 140 amps alternator because it was originally installed on my car but after that i have this, i decided that i'm going to run with the smaller one because i don't need so much amperage especially I'm, i don't have ac or something like that e36s with the ac systems came with 140 amps and without comes with 80 amps so you can clearly see the difference in size and now we're going to do the most important thing seeing what is the weight comparison and yeah while i was struggling with this pulley to install it because i was thinking that it's poke and play I break down one of my housings so once again this is from 80 amps alternator but when I start trying to figure out how to install this pulley this happened so yeah I have one alternator to the garbage and this was the original pulley installed here actually let's see what is the weight of this I have measured the weight on the bigger pulley and the alternator is it was around 130 grams and this is yeah this is much more so for sure at least we have one significant difference in weight because all the rest were heavier but this is not big of a deal the biggest advantage is the bigger diameter so now let's see what is going to be the weight comparison so let's start with the original one which was removed from the car so this is from the 46 s54 so 6.4 
и 36 и 361 8 amps the one that I'm going to install five point nine so pretty much this is the the most white weighted one see yeah, the difference actually if we install the more heavier pulley which is around 150 grams heavier we're going to be around 6.1 6.2 still a little bit lighter than the original S54 alternator what we don't do for light weighting so I'm going to install this and I'm going to check the alignment of the pulleys because this is the biggest issue right now you can see how close is the housing to the pulley so if I took a little bit more I'm going to hit the housing once again so now I'm going to install it and we're going to see how it's going to sit And just to be clear, if you want to use E36 alternator, it's going to be plug-in play. This is the E36 one with the original pulley and it aligns perfectly with the belt with the rest of the pulleys. But I decided that I want a bigger pulley because uh, this is going to preserve the bearings of the alter alternator. I have seen on higher RPMs, this bearing are going pretty bad, pretty fast. That is why I want to have a bigger pulley here because the bearings are going to run much more cooler like that. Okay, so the alternator is tightened up with the parasitic pulley. So now I'm going to use the laser tool to see are we aligned. So I'm going to position it exactly in the middle of the pulley. As you can see, we have one line left on the both sides, which means I'm exactly in the middle of the pulley. So this is the laser. And now I'm going to see how it's aligned with the hydraulic pump pulley. So this is the alignment. As we can see, if we count the lines, the piston grooves, uh, we're going to see that we have one, two, three, one, two, three. So we are exactly in the middle, pretty much. And if I rotate it a little bit more, we're going to see that once again, this is the crankshaft pulley. I'm exactly at the middle. So once again, we have three lines, grooves on both sides of the laser, which means the pulley should be perfectly aligned and I should not have any issues with my serpentine belt. So yeah, I think it's going to work out and I'm not sure exactly one millimeter is going to cause an issue or not, but I think that I'm going to be all fine. Okay, so yeah, we remove the bearing with this hammer because my tool didn't work. The diameter of the bearing was way too small, so I was not able to install it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to change the bearing on the crankshaft. This is the part number. And after that, I'm going to install the crankshaft and the clutch. Yeah, I'm going to use the OEM crankshaft and clutch from S54, which is the Seller of the engine sent me. This is from SMG. So yeah, some people are wrong say that it's not going to work, but uh, I have read on some places that it should work. So yeah, I'm going to try because the coach looks pretty good with the coach pressure plate and the flywheel, especially this is the dual mass flywheel, and this look if I to be honest like a brand new one. So it's pretty good, but it's pretty heavy. So sooner or later I'm going to go with white weighted flywheel, single mass. But for now I want to try like this to see how it feels. Yeah, I'm going to change the bolts for the flywheel with new ones. If you are using the old bolts, which I don't recommend, you're going to need to apply a thread locker on the bolts because if you don't put a thread locker there, 
Probably after that you're going to have a leak from the crankshaft because it's a pass-through thread and if you don't put there it's going to cause leakage in long run. So now I'm going to install the new bearing and after that yeah don't forget something. Most of the people are forgetting this, I don't know why. Don't forget to install this dust chute on the gearbox and try to clean it a little bit. And after that you need to install a firewall. A really common mistake. And just to show you what gearbox I'm going to use, I'm not going to use my get rack, which I was running for a really long period of time with my M52 bit 28 I'm going to use this ZF gearbox, which I don't have a clue what is the condition of it. So here is the part number of the gearbox. Uh, for the people that don't know, there are different type of Z ZF gearboxes from diesel ones, from petrol ones. From petrol ones there, they were several, I believe. Uh, they were 310Z and 320Z and the 320Z is tougher than the 310. This especially is 320, so it should be tougher, the tougher one. It's from 2.8 E46. Actually, we are going to install the same gearbox on this E36 with the V8, which is M62. Uh, and the gearbox right now is there. So we are pretty much going to start the same gearbox. Yeah, it's not so clean, but uh, once again, this is 320Z. Uh, we just need to figure out how to catch it because of the V8, which we're going to install. But uh, once again, this is going to be in a different series and it's going to be kind of interesting build, I believe. I have tightened the flywheel and now I'm installing the coach from the S54 SMG. But for this type of coaches, self adjusting, you're going to need a special tool for it, uh, which is looking like that. Uh, so to reset it before installation, and uh, if you are reusing it, once again, you're going to need a tool like this. Uh, if you don't use it, uh, probably going to have some issues with the coach after that. So that's why I'm using this, and now pretty much is centered and the next step is going to be to tighten up the pressure plate and install the new gearbox. So I am working over the fuel system. So this is the S54 fuel filter with the fuel regulator. Yes, on M52 the fuel regulator is on the rail but on the S54 is on the filter. And actually you can change only the filter, not the both of them like on M54. Uh, so the setup on M52, as we know, is that the both metallic hoses are going somewhere here to this point. But because of the regulator is right here, we should connect one of the steel hoses here, which is going to be the return fuel. And the supply fuel yeah, is going uh, exactly to the filter. So I have removed my, my old filter. So this is the filter from the M52. I have uh, removed the steel hoses. Yeah, I have cut them because they are kind of rusty and I have decided that I'm going to go with stainless steel. I have one suspicion because the diameter inside here is 6.5 millimeters and the ones that I found were 5.5, 5.8 millimeters of inner diameter. So a little bit smaller, but I don't think there, there will be any issue. So this is the supply hose. This is the return hose. So, if we go align, I'm going to connect the return hose here and the supply is going to be connected with the original hose which I removed from my filter. So, this is going to connect the filter and the stainless steel hose here with some clamps. I'm going to need to connect the vacuum supply here. This is the hose which I need to connect to the engine. Uh, the connection point was all right there it's a quick quick connect so i just need to snap it there i'm going to do it after i clean a little bit the holes okay so looking the super sprint headers there is one minus when i was installing the gearbox it turns out that i cannot install it without removing one of the one of the sensors as we can see this is the white band and the narrow band is removed because we install it as we can see how little room it has with the white band. At least I can leave this to install the gearbox, but the narrow band is tilted much more, and that is why you're going to need to remove it every time you are installing or removing the gearbox. 
So one minus this sleeve can be a little bit crooked to the right, and uh, this is going to prevent this from happening. But yeah, I guess Super Sprint didn't think about this. After the installation of the ZF gearbox, now it's time to install the drive shaft. But because I was previously driven with Getrack, now I'm going to need a different drive shaft in my case because I was running a Getrack and Type 188 differential, which is the bigger differential. I have the exact length drive shaft. In my case, the middle one was my shaft previously installed in the car, and the dirty one is the new one, the new one, which is terrible one, which I'm going to use only the front part of it, because yeah, you're going to see that it's exactly the same length, the both of them, but this one is for Getrack and this one is for ZF, and the difference is not in the length, but in the ears for the gearbox which is connecting to. So these ears are bigger than the Getrack one, so it's a little bit higher uh, because of the flange on the ZF gearbox. And if you are running a bigger differential type 188, you're going to need a shorter rear part of the drive shaft. As we can see, this drive shaft, once again from E36, is the same. These both flanges are the same, the front ones, both of them are for Getrack, but the rear ones, this one is longer, this one is shorter, because this drive shaft was for differential type 168. And once again, the shorter one is for 188. So once again, if you're running bigger differential, you're going to need shorter rear section. And if you're running the bigger gearbox, let's say ZF1, you're going to need front part of the drive shaft with the bigger ears. So this is the difference between all the drive shafts for the 36. So I'm going to use once again my rear part with the new drive shaft front part. And yeah. Probably I'm going to need to balance it after that, but I'm going to see after I start driving the car and see how it is. If I have some vibrations, probably I'm going to send it for balancing, but for now, I'm just going to assemble it to see how it is. And yeah, uh, I'm not going to use this one because here, because as we can see, somebody have work here, uh, but for sure he didn't do a good job because this is completely gone. It has a lot of slack inside. Uh, this is how the original should look like. As you can see, the difference. So yeah, this is totally gone. For sure, I'm not going to use it. I they actually tried to do it also here, but I guess they didn't do a good job. So that's why I'm going to use my rear section. I'm happy that the front part of the drive shaft doesn't have anything that can wear out like there. And yeah, about the gear knobs mechanisms. This is what I have removed from my car, which is once again with the Getrack, and this is this is sent to me. And it is claimed is that is from ZF. So you're going to see the difference in this curvature here. As we can see, mine is straight, and this one is curved. And yeah, the length is a little bit di uh, different. This is shorter. If we put them one to each other, this is a little bit shorter. So the fuel lines are installed on their places, and this is how is the setup right now. I'm still waiting here for a quick connect, but I'm going to show you in the end. So pretty much this is the alignment oops, with the filter and the return fuel which is going to be connected here. I'm going to show you in the end. This is the fuel regulator connected with the vacuum hose which goes to the top of the engine. And this is the fuel supply which is going right there. So yeah, it's kind of dark back, but uh, it's connecting right there. So this is how everything roots up from here and connects directly here. So I have changed my fuel filter. Uh, and this is how we, we have made some welding on the stainless steel pipes. So to be able to install the hoses and to be sure that the clamp is going to hold. Uh, and here we have made this on all the ends of the stainless steel holes. Okay, so to show you how everything looks like in the end. So. Once again, the filter, the regulator, everything is connected. As I told you, I have used a quick connection once again, as on this side. I just took a few holes from M54 and cut it here. And actually the rest of the holes, I used it, I used it here to the return fuel because it turns out that the fuel line which I had here was a little bit short. Uh, so I made it work here. So yeah, the fuel lines are connected to the engine. The vacuum hose, the supply. So the only thing that lives for the 
the system is the fuel pump which is in the reservoir but I'm going to do this little bit later. Just want to show you how is set it up like that. Shiny.